Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video we're going to talk about doing window pulls for real estate videos. All right, so first let me preface this video by saying that this is not gonna be an overall solution for pulling windows for every single real estate video that you shoot. And the reason for that is because it's sort of an involved process, takes a little bit of time, and also requires certain specific equipment, which you might not even have or even wanna invest into. That being said, this was an experiment that I wanted to try because this is the only way that I can conceive of being able to achieve a window pull in a real estate video. And by window pull, I mean being able to see perfectly out of the windows while also maintaining a perfect exposure inside the room or the house. This is a very difficult thing to achieve with a video. You know, we see this all the time in photos, but with video, it's a whole nother story. Of course, you could try shooting log to get more dynamic range, but you're still not going to be able to achieve a perfect view out of the window. So this is the only way that I could really come up with that you can do this at this time. If you guys have any ideas or solutions to this, please let me know in the comments below. So hopefully in the future, this sort of effect will be easier to achieve with AI features coming out in editing software these days, or the possibility of new camera features such as the ability to shoot HDR video will make this easier. But for now, this is the only way that I can think of to achieve this effect. And I just wanted to share the results of this experiment with you guys, because I do think it has its uses. Like maybe you're shooting a high-end home and it has a killer view of the ocean or maybe the mountains or whatever. It's the main selling factor of the house. So it might be worth spending some extra time on creating a shot like this to blow your client's mind, blow buyer's minds and really sell the house. So without further ado, I just wanna take you on site with me now and show you how I captured this footage. And then I'll take you back here and we'll look at it on the computer and how I composited it together. Before we continue on with this video, I just wanna share a quick word about our sponsor, PixelMob. Are you looking for a professional real estate photo editor to help lighten your workload? Are you having a hard time finding a good and reliable editor or don't even know where to look for one? Or maybe you just personally struggle with editing and can't seem to achieve the professional end result that you've been looking for? If any of this sounds like you, you should definitely check out PixelMob. PixelMob helps take the guesswork out of finding a reputable editor and connects you with the right people to do the job. PixelMob is an awesome website that links you up with available editors capable of doing just about any sort of real estate photo editing you can imagine, including HDR blending, flambient, virtual staging, object removal, etc. The best part of all is that PixelMob vets all the editors prior to allowing them onto their platform to ensure that they can indeed deliver on what they say they can. I also really like that there's a peer review system where photographers can rate the editors from one to five stars, giving you further tools and helping you choose the best editor to work with for your particular job. The editor also does not get paid until you are satisfied with your order. If you've ever been in the search for an editor and tried a few out, then you know full well there's been a, such a sore need for something like PixelMob in our industry, and I really think a lot of us real estate photographers can benefit from this service. It's completely free to sign up, and if you use my link, pixelmob.com IREP, you will receive $5 in credit towards your first order, so there's no reason to at least not give it a try. You'll also find that link down in the description of this video. PixelMob is now offering a new service called PixelMatch, which is a manual matching service where someone from the PixelMob team will personally match you with an editor that perfectly suits your needs and style. And the best part of all, they're guaranteed to deliver consistent high quality results or your money back. This is all for a one-time fee of $349, but if you mention my channel or my name when signing up, they're offering $50 off. The service is limited to 15 spots until the next round later this summer. So if this is something you're interested in, definitely act fast. I think it's well worth the money for the value and the peace of mind that this service brings to the table. All right guys, so I'm here at a shoot and we're gonna try this little experiment out. Here's my apparatus. This is my old Edelkrone slider. Sorry, I have to film this on my phone because my camera's on there and I don't have a second camera with me. So this old little slider is a cool little tool, but it's kind of obsolete these days because with gimbals now, you can kind of mimic the same movements with a gimbal. But in this scenario, we wanna be able to replicate the same exact movement. So you can see here, you could set the speed to, you know, one to a hundred. So theoretically, you know, this movement, either this way or that way, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, should be exactly the same every single time because it's moving the exact same speed. So in theory, we should be able to layer these clips in After Effects and be able to mask in, you know, the windows here, uh, that window and the sliding glass door. You know, obviously there's not a good view here. Why would we do this in this shoot? We wouldn't. This is just for an experiment and for demonstration purposes. But, you know, say there was a killer view of the ocean or a lake or, you know, whatever, you know, and you wanted to do this, you know, this could come in handy for those things. Um, 
I don't know if you'd want to invest in something like this just for that reason, but, but if you want to show window views in a real estate video and have the interior exposure correct as well, this is the only way I can think of really doing it. So at least this stage in the game, one day maybe it'll be a new or a better way. But uh, right now I think this is the only way. Um, so let's try this and see what happens. All right, so I'm recording now and I have my interior exposure where I want it to be. Uh, it looks overexposed on this camera, but I'll show you the actual clip. It's not that overexposed. You know, maybe we'll go a little dramatic and overboard with this window pole here and really make it, you know, dramatic just for this demonstration. But, uh, all right, so I have that set and I'm gonna, you know, make my movement here. All right, so that movement's done. I'm gonna stop recording. I'm just gonna move this back to start position. Now I wanna change my exposure on here to have the window view. You know, I purposely, I purposely used F5.6 here, so my ISO, I can bump that up because I wanna adjust the exposure here with ISO. I don't really wanna mess with aperture just for the reasons of focus and you know depth of field and that sort of thing so i'm going to just lower my iso now till i get a window view that i like again i'm going to go pretty dramatic with this as, as i said so. so i'm going to bring it all the way down to like 100 now the view out of the window is pretty crisp and you know it's probably underexposed whatever i'd like i said kind of dramatic but uh now i'm going to record and do this movement a second time. All right, so that movement's complete. Now that's really it for shooting. I mean, really not a big deal to shoot, not very big time commitment here. This is an easy thing to set up, just screw it on your tripod. But again, you know, you would have to buy this piece of gear to be able to do this. But for high-end homes or something like that, when you're really looking to make something really sweet, you know, <laughs> this could be a cool little tool and a cool little trick. All right, so now let's take these clips back to the computer and see what we can do with them. All right guys, so now that you saw how I captured the clips, let me take you into After Effects now and show you how I composited them together. All right, so here in After Effects, you'll see if I press play here that the window views are already in here and everything looks nice and this looks great in my opinion. So I went ahead and did this first because I wanted to make sure it worked first because this is the first time I'm doing this as well. And I also wanted to make sure I got a good result out of it, which I think I did, as you can see for yourself. Otherwise, what would be the point of making this video if it didn't come out good? So I think it did. So now let's take a look at how I achieved this. All right, first things first, you'll see I imported these two clips into After Effects. This first clip is, let me just shrink this down, is the interior exposed clip. As you can see, it's overexposed for the outside here in the windows. And then this is the window shot, uh, you know, exposed for the outside. This is a little too dark, as I said. I did go extreme on this here. As I said, I was going to, because I really wanted to make this example really like, obvious and whatever but uh it was still too dark i ended up raising the exposure let me show you how i did that so if you just take a clip here and you drag it to the composition icon down here it'll create a composition based off the parameters of that clip which is what we have here and then down here in our composition you'll see we have three clips here one of these is a duplicate i'll show you why in a second but on top here is our clip for exposing for the interior of the room and you know if we get rid of that you'll see underneath we have the clip for the outside and then this actually this middle clip is a duplicated clip of the outside window shots here because as you see here this window here uh, just seemed way too dark to me so I wanted to raise the exposure of that so I just cropped it as you see and then raised the exposure there a little bit more to match this one a little bit better so now if we look at the full composite here these two exposures of these windows are more close together and they match better. If I turn this off now, you'll see like this is super dark. So I just wanted to raise up this window a little bit more than this one. And I did on both of these, if you look in effects, I have lumetri color here. And so I did adjust the exposure for both of these outside window clips. So I raised the exposure up a little bit because I said, as I said, it's a little too dark. So, and I did lumetri color on this clip, interior clip too, as you'll see here, uh, lumetri color. If I turn that off, it's just, you know, just 
just in the shadows, exposure a little bit, and some color a little bit, just to sweeten it up a little bit and make it look a little nicer. So I did lumetri color on each of the clips to, you know, mainly adjust the exposures to where I wanted them to be. And then all the only other effect I used on e each of these clips was warp stabilizer to help smooth them out a little bit. The slider sometimes can have a bit of a bumpy ride to it. So just to smooth out any of that, so, and make the movements look as smooth as possible. So to match these clips up together, so they lined up when they play on top of each other, I just adjusted the opacity of this top interior clip here. So if you go to uh, transform, you'll see opacity here, and you can just lower the opacity. I just lowered it way down to like, you know, 25, 30 or whatever, just so I could see through. And then I was able to move the, the clip underneath it for the windows you know, you can just drag it forward or backwards until it lined up perfectly with the, the other one because they have different pre-rolls, you know, where I hit record, there might be three seconds before it started or four, you know, it depends. So like th there's different pre-rolls there and I just try to drag it so it lined up and knew where it started playing. So once I had the starting point lined up and, and they're overlaid over each other, I could see that they were lined up perfectly and then they were playing together because the speed of the slider is pretty accurate. I didn't have to do any adjustments in that regard. So it did play at the exact same speed and lined up perfectly. I just had to line them up that way by using opacity, making sure they lined up and played together first. So that's how I did that. Now let me just put the opacity back to 100. So once I had all these clips lined up and they were playing on top of each other perfectly and I adjusted my exposures and put the warp stabilizer on it and got everything together in that regard, then it was time to deal with the windows. And as you see here on this top clip, I have masks here. So one, two, three, four, four masks. And the reason there's four masks is one for this panel, one for this panel, one for this panel, and one for this panel. One thing I wanna to mention too here, which is really important when shooting this sort of thing, if you ever wanna try this, is that you don't want anything complex in front of the window, like maybe like a plant with like leaves or, you know, anything, overlapping the window where you're gonna have to do like intricate mask. Like if you take a look here, like you can see the handle here of the sliding glass door. I didn't even bother with it. I just went over it. If you zoom all the way out and you play it, no one's ever gonna notice that handle there probably unless they're like really zooming in and you know, looking at it so closely, no one would ever know it was there. But you know, that's my point. You don't want any intricate objects in front of it because you just wanna be, be able to make rectangular masks here, keep it really simple because you're gonna be animating those masks over the whole timeline of the clip. And if you have, if you're masking around, trying to mask around leaves or like an object that's like overlapping the window, it's gonna be a nightmare and it's gonna take you forever. So I'm just telling you right now, you don't wanna to have to deal with that. So when you're shooting the window view or whatever, you're getting your shot while you're shooting it. If there's objects in front of the window, move them out of the way when you shoot it and just keep it clean and make sure you just have like nice rectangular windows. You know, if the windows had crossbars on them and you had to like mask out every individual pane of window there, like I don't even think I would do it. It's just too much work and way too many masks to animate. It's it'd be too crazy. All right, so now what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the timeline and I'm gonna delete one of these masks just to show you how I create a mask and animate it. So that way this tutorial will be complete and you'll know exactly how I created this. So if I select this top mask here, I'm just gonna delete it, hit the delete key, and now you'll see it's overexposed here because it's, you know, the, the interior clips here is what we're seeing. We're not seeing a mask through to the uh, other clip underneath. So we wanna create a new mask. So how we're gonna do that is we wanna make sure that this clip is selected and get our pen tool. And you'll see next to the pen tool here, the icon next to it is the little mask icon, which is what we want. See if we were down here, say we didn't have a clip selected. Now we have the pen tool selected. You'll see now there's a little star next to it. That's a shape. We don't want that because that's, you'll see fill and stroke here. We're just, that's for creating shapes. That's not what we're trying to do here. We want to make sure the clip is selected with the pen tool. And now we'll have that mask icon there. And that's what we want. So if we zoom in here a little bit, all we're gonna do is just go in the corners here, click, click, go down to the bottom. By the way, if you hold spacebar, you'll get that little hand icon and be able to drag down, makes things quick. Click, click, now I'm gonna go back up and close the mask and now we have this rectangular mask. You may be thinking, why aren't we seeing through? And that's because we have to change this here. 
as you'll see, these all these other masks are subtract. That's what we want for this one as well. We want to go to where it says add here. We want to go to subtract and voila, now we're seeing through. Okay, that's great. So then we zoom out. That's what we want. But we'll, as you'll see all these little dots here, that's because those are keyframes for these other masks. And now we have to animate this mask along with the clip in the timeline as it moves. So how we do that is, again, make sure your playhead is all the way to the beginning. And I'm gonna open this mask up here and you'll see mask path here down here, the little stopwatch, I'm gonna click the stopwatch. So now we have a keyframe right at the beginning of the clip. And basically what I do here, uh, I'm gonna zoom in again and you'll see this little preview uh, window over here with these controls on it. If you don't see it, you can go to window down to preview here to get that up. And you'll see this little button here. It says next frame. That's what we want. I'm gonna go like every five frames and move the mask. You can try to do it longer spells like 10, 15 frames if you want, but I'm telling you right now, the longer you go, the more it's gonna not line up correctly and you'll just have to go back and fine tune it. I mean, that's fine too. Whatever you wanna do is fine, but I just like to go five frames by five, fr you know, every five frames or so. How I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna hit, click on this five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Now the clip has moved ahead five frames. There wasn't too much movement here yet because the clip is still gaining speed. So, but if I take the arrow tool here, selection tool, I'm just gonna click off of the mask because you wanna make sure you're just manipulating one handle at a time, not all, all the whole mask at once. Otherwise, because as the perspective changes, the shape of the mask is gonna change too. So you can't just move the whole mask and expect it to line up because it's gonna, you know, as the camera moves, the shape moves, you know, it's gonna get smaller or bigger or whatever. So I just move one corner of the mask at a time. That's the best way to do it, in my opinion. You know, you can just move this over slightly. You don't want to go too far because you'll see like you'll start getting dark over here when it overlaps the uh, bar of the door here. So that's how you know you went too far. So you just want to make sure that, you know, right about there where there's no dark overlap here. Oh, yeah. one other thing too is important here. Mask feather down here. I just add two pixel feather on it. It just, as you see, it just softened the edge there. It just softens the edge of it and makes it look a little bit more realistic, helps blend it in a little bit better. Again, same thing here. I'm just gonna move this handle over just slightly. And again, if you go too far here, you're gonna get start getting this bright fringe or bright coming through. So, you know, you don't want that either. So you just wanna, you know, bring it to where it looks right. And then same thing for the bottom. These actually look pretty much fine. That's a little bright there. So yeah, somewhere around there. And again, just continue on with the process here. And I'm gonna go five frames ahead again. One, two, three, four, five. As you see, you can see the brightness coming in here. That's what we don't want. We just wanna close that out, just drag this over to basically that bright fringe disappears. And as you can see here, it's dark here. So we wanna you know, bring this over until that dark fringe disappears. So we're just moving that mask, you know, each way a little bit more and creating a new keyframe. Again, I'm getting rid of that, that bright fringe there. So a little too much. Again, five more frames, one, two, three, four, five. This process gets faster and faster as we're doing it. It's, you know, a tedious process, but like, it's just a matter of, you know, going through and doing it. It just takes some time. Like I said, it's not something you would do for every real estate video you're gonna make, but if you had that one special shot you're trying to get, I think it'd be worth it maybe for that. Once you animate through, I like to go back and of course you're gonna play through to make sure it looks good. Um, we didn't do that many keyframes here, but inevitably you're gonna have imperfections in your mask. Like if I try to play this real quick, like just in the beginning here, it looks pretty good, but it'll do this thing when you play it back after you get through the whole clip where you'll see imperfections where like, one of the handles will bounce a little bit and like some fringe will come in and it won't look so good. Like, and you'll just have to smooth that out. So basically what I do after I animate the whole thing, there's these little hand arrows here. So it'll take you keyframe to keyframe. So I'll just go back to the beginning and go one keyframe to the next. As you see here, like exactly, it already happened. So like you see how this, there's like some bright fringe here on, on this left, left hand side here. I go back to the beginning frame, like that's not there. We want it to look more like this, it's cleaner. So I just go through 
and it like you can you can see the animation if you keep clicking like one two three four you know those all look good on the left side but that one boom it like pops out there a little bit and there's like that fringe and you'll notice that as it plays it'll it'll look like funny you know now that i'm on this keyframe here i can just take my you know arrow tool again just i know that i, I got to bring this back a little bit further see it's manipulating all these so i want to click off and just manipulate this one corner just want to bring this in a little bit so about there so now it's now if i go back for to here i like to compare it to the previous frame keyframe too so if i go back and forth here now all right these are matching up a little bit better here maybe not exactly perfectly but there's no white fringe in there anymore so now i know i smoothed that out all right guys so now that i showed you how this is done let's take one more quick look at the finished clip All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support. Also, take a look down in the description below. I got links down there to Pixel Mob, the sponsor of this video. Please check them out. I also got links to a sky replacement pack that I created, editing practice packs where I give you guided editing on a full set of images. It's really helpful if you're learning editing. Also down there, I got links to my Patreon page, which gives you access to my private Discord group where you can consult with me directly if you have any questions about real estate photography. A lot of good stuff down there, so please check that all out. Thanks again so much for watching this video, and I'll see you again soon on the next one.